Hello and welcome to Tech 18. I am Muhammad Adnan and in this video we are going to talk about Copilot in Microsoft Fabric and Power BI. So these days I think you are also looking into social media like LinkedIn and YouTube and you are seeing a lot of videos about Copilot, 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 right? So it is actually now the thing is they are coming into in our real business use cases these co-pilots. So it is really required to understand what is co-pilot and what are the pros of that and what are the cons of that and what is the limitations and important thing the pricing part because that is going to consume a lot if you haven't taken care in that particular area. So we will deep dive all of these in this video, stay tuned for that. Before going into that in detail, as per YouTube analytics, almost 90% of my viewers are not my subscribers. I request you to please subscribe to my channel if you haven't so far. As you can see, they again the same image which refers to Microsoft Fabric here. It has a lot of capabilities. It has a lot of capabilities that we can have data engineering, data science, data analytics and real-time intelligence as well. So every layer of Microsoft Fabric is Copilot in that. So what is Copilot in that case? So Copilot is basically a kind of AI agent which is added inside to each and every product here. So that user can interact with that conversationally. It can just talk to that and it can help us to increase our productivity and do some of our tasks here. So as an example, if you take for Power BI alone, um, so here the copilot can transform and analyze your data. And if you want to use some help on Power Query, then it actually helps you to write some Power Query steps here. And based on your natural language input here. Similarly, it can also help you to write the DAX queries. And also it can help you create report and visualizations. And for business user in the latest update from Microsoft, they can use in mobile app itself. So they can ask the summaries for that. They can ask any questions and based on the semantic model enhanced data, it can give you the answers for that. So the benefit here, it increases the productivity and then it understands the natural language. Right now, this is only in English and then it promotes self-service. So users don't need to depend on IT people that they, they need to develop the report and then give it to them. They can directly ask questions to the data if data is readily available, then they will get quickly the answers here. So these are the some prerequisites and it is important for you to know about what it is. So the first thing here is F64 license. So if Microsoft is actually stopping this P series of license, P1, P2 kind of thing. So if we already have that and you have already made some long term contract with them, then it will continue further. So for that minimum, you need to have a P1 license and if you're just gearing up with the fabric thing, then at least you need to have a F64 license. So fabric usually starts from F2, F4, F5 kind of thing. But for start with the co-pilot, you need to have F64, which is actually also says that P1 is equal to F64. So that's the correlation between that. So P2 equal to F128. So here. Power BI admin should also provide access to specific people or entire organization. First of all, they need to enable this in tenant settings, which I will show you in the next slide. So, and this has to be, it can be for entire organizations or to only a specific group of people that they can assign in by the tenant admin. And also user requests contributor or abode to the workspace role. So if they want to consume this, then they need at least the contributor, member or admin here. The viewer doesn't have access in order to work on the co-pilot part. But being a copilot thing, they can access through mobile app that is possible. But in order to work like to build a kind of DAX queries and other stuff, so that you need to have at least the contributor license. So well prepared semantic model with proper naming conversion as per the standard here. So we need to have a, there are certain metrics available from Microsoft standard documentation that if you follow these kind of things in our semantic model, then the copilot can respond to you in a better manner here. So there is a table available uh, so that you can also refer to that link which I will mention in the description of this video. And Copilot requires that QA be enabled in semantic model dataset settings. So whenever you work on that, you need to make sure that there is a setting available for us while building a Power BI report, you need to enable that settings for QA visuals here. And most importantly, if your tenant is, this is actually one of the main important reason which I made this video. 
is like if your tenant capacity is outside of the region of the US or France like Germany kind of thing then tenant admin need to enable another settings in Microsoft I mean fabric tenant here like power bay tenant that they want to send this data outside of your region so that they can process these things and then it can send it back to you here. So the below table which is showing up here is actually refers to that itself. So there are only two places where Microsoft EA, OpenAI actually available on data center which is in the US another is in EU data boundary. So only the people those who are in US they can actually process the data in Azure OpenAI which is basically the behind the scene of Copilot within their boundary itself. If they are in EU, EU which is uh, Europe, Germany, um, uh, France kind of thing then they can actually get the data within their boundary itself. If we are like us like we have in India, China or Japan kind of thing then it needs to take the data from our region and send it back to US region for the processing and then it also send it back to us to the response here. So if we are okay with that itself then only we need to enable this. So please make sure whenever you want to implement this you discuss with your management about that because there are certain cases, certain reports which is a kind of compliance that has to be addressed and also case sensitive issue here. In the sense it's a sensitive information is there. So you, even though it is not going to take your real data but still there is a kind of options maybe there is a chance available. I am not sure about that but still I am saying that we need to take care about in order to follow these steps here. So that's the reason in the next slide which I am showing up here is basically there are two settings which you need to enable in your tenant which is uh, one is user can use preview of copilot in other features in Microsoft Power BI and using Azure Open AI and another thing is data sent to Azure Open AI can be processed outside of your tenant geographical regions compliance boundary or national cloud instance. So this is basically that you need to enable here so that it can process your data outside of your region here. Alright, but still there is a pricing part here but before that I just want to cover here the entire process of copilot how it actually works. So let's assume that in the Power BI if you open up page in Power BI service it actually open up your right hand side pane here right you can ask anything over there. If you want to add a visual it will going to add that if she's going to add ask any question then it's going to give you the response over here over there itself. So how it actually works. So this is the left hand side where the user actually gives a prompt and that actually happens the next step which is the grounding process where it actually takes the information about the user the prompt what the user has asked the questions and also a little bit better metadata about the data set itself which is a semantic model of power bi so even though it's not taking up your entire data it's actually only taking your metadata itself so that it will take and then it will look for the region if you are in the us or eu then it will process within that region if it is not then it will take the data outside of your region and process in within us here so that's the default location it will go for other countries and in the US it actually process those information using chat GPT, chat GPT 3.5 language here. So it can increase, it can change in future but for now this is chat GPT 3.5 itself. And then once it is processed then it is going to send this data back before to that it actually check the process here. Because chat GPT is kind of large language model it can make mistakes. So it actually checks certain things which is basically the settings of responsible checks here it should not have to give you the wrong response like harmful information or it should not have to affect any of the persons or any sentiment uh, response here. So these things will actually it controls over there. And finally it gives you the response in the user on that particular box here if you ask any question it is going to reply you on that area here. And once again if the user wants some conversational part asking the same questions or follow up questions based on the response it is going to again use the same loop process here. So this is how actually the entire co-process, co-pilot process works here. I hope you got a much clarity about this here. Now let's focus on the important topic which is the pricing. So when it comes to pricing there are some interesting thing here. So initially they launched during like uh, I think February 2024 and after that it's actually given one month of trial and from March 1st onward they started billing here. So if you have F64 onward then you can also use on that particular part. So initially when they launched, they actually launched their input token and output token. If you are not familiar with LLMs and input token and output token kind of thing, I made some videos on my channel about these things. You can just check out those videos as well. So basically they launched here as 400 CU which is nothing but capacity units. I will talk about that in a bit. 
So 400 CUs per thousand tokens here. That's the threshold they have kept here. Input is nothing but our questions, our prompt, and output is nothing but the response from the Azure Open AI or Copilot. So 1200 capacity units per thousand tokens here. So initially we can make the use of here monitoring in using the capacity metric app itself. Now in the recent update of November 2024, I mean they are already released in October, but it effect from November itself that they have reduced the capacity price to 50% here. So instead of 400, now it is 200 CU seconds and output token is 1200, previously it was now 600 seconds. That's really a drastic reduction 50% in the price point here. And they also rebranded this in the capacity metric app. When you look for this information, how much you have consumed in that part, they are renamed this as a copilot and AI. The reason behind that is they recently launched about fabric AI skills. So that is also one of the copilot thing which is happening behind the scene. So they are clubbed together these things and rebranded this as copilot and AI here. So you can also use fabric AI skills on top of that. So here these things are actually built on this capacity metric itself. Right, but there is another another checkpoint here which I will tell you as uh, as moving forward now. So now let's understand what is actually happening. The CU and all all these things is not easy to understand, right? So we'll understand through an example here. So let's take an example like I'm asking a question: What are the top ten selling products uh, in 2023? If I have a data set here, then the input token this will actually convert this into 200, for example, and the response it gives back to me is actually taking as 150 tokens here. So the consumption of this one is basically the formula is input token divided by 1000 which is the threshold into the 200 CU seconds here. So the input actually has taken me 40 seconds and the output has taken me 90 seconds. So 40 plus 90 is totally 130 seconds here. Now the single query actually when I ask something to a copilot is actually gives me the response. It has taken 130 CU second not the real second it's actually the CU second which is capacity unit seconds here. So it has taken 130 seconds from the capacity. Now we have a F64 for example that's the capacity which is available. Then 130 divided by 64 is actually showing as 2.03 seconds. So now you may again think about what is this 2.23, 2.03 here. So you now I, I hope you understand about what is 130 here, the input and output token. And the 64 is basically nothing but our capacity units here. So the 2.03 is basically the dividing of these two things here. With the help of next example, you will be much clear about what is happening here. So let's assume that 64 is nothing but 64 capacity units per second which Microsoft provides us in this particular capacity. So if you are going for 128, then it is going to give us 128 capacity units per second. So every second will have a 64 for now in this case. So as an example here, a user actually runs a copilot prompt. At the same time, another user also runs the same question, another question, and another user actually starting to refresh these things. So the, basically, the copilot in, in this capacity, there are front end load and also the back end process, right? Like user interacting any report and taking any export on this part. So these things consider as a kind of high priority job. So that's a front uh, jobs. And now this thing, the copilot and data refresh thing, it's actually called as back end process here, back end jobs. So the front end part which is user interaction, interactivity, having the visuals. So those things will give the high priority while providing the access to the things. This are all the copilot thing. If the capacity is not available, then this will keep a backseat. It will slowly uh, delay a little bit here. But with this example, we will understand here. So let's assume that the first request what the user has taken, it actually considered 30, 320 CU second, which is input and output inclusive of that. It has taken 320 CU seconds. Now, as we have only 64 CUs per second, so in that case, we 320 divided by CU is nothing but 5 seconds approximate. So, what is happening here, the first 5 seconds is actually totally consumed by the request 1. Now, the other 2 requests which has actually initiated at the same time, they have to wait until the first request gets complete. And after the 5th second, the second record will start and the second record will take, and take again for 4 seconds. And the third one actually had to start after the ninth second because it's going to be added in the queue. So based on the prompt and based on the consumption, it's going to take all of this and then finally we will get the result here. So that's the reason you may see a little bit lag when you're continuously using this copilot thing because it's actually in the queue and it will take a little bit time in order to give you the response here because that's the capacity what you have. 
I hope now you got the much clarity about this thing, how this actually works here. If you are still not clear about that, I request you please go and watch this video repeat again. So you will get clear understanding about that here. But the last final thing which I just want to mention here is this, the recent announcement in Ignite 2024 is Fabric AI capacities. So initially before to this launch, Microsoft actually use this co-pilot within the capacity itself. So it is actually hard for the user actually to assign the different different capacities here because if data is refresh happening user is interacting on the power bi report kind of thing and some people is doing some spark job kind of thing in fabric and also users are actually asking questions on the copilot so if everything happens at the same time then there will be highly chance that the capacity will be reached in the top level and you will get have a response delay in process delay access delay kind of thing so for that they have taken a great step that we can buy a separate fabric ai capacity itself that can actually focus only for the copilot activity like fabric AI skills and copilot in every product of Microsoft. So the good thing here is you can just buy a fabric AI capacities and then you can assign to all of your workloads what you want and where you want to use here. That's a great thing. It is actually not attached to your workspace capacity. So that's the benefit of this here. They actually announcing this but we are not sure about when they are going to release this but this is an upcoming one. So this is an entire video about Copilot. I have given a clear description and detail about what is the Copilot and where we are going to use that, what is the pricing point and what is the pros and cons of that. And also make sure about this region non-availability of that for India, China and Japan for that. So these are also some important topic which I just want to sh share with you. If you found this video helpful, just hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed yet, if you are new to this channel, then please hit the subscribe button and also press the bell icon to get the latest notifications. But make sure to turn on the notification on your devices. Share it with your friends and colleagues. If you have any queries and feedback, let me know in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Keep learning. See you in the next video.